Hello, Jasmine. Welcome to Beta Talks. Hi, thank you for having me on. Thank you for coming on. So do you want to share your type, your OP type right away? Um, NITI, uh, sleep, blast, consume, play, MF, audio. Yeah, great. So we are actually just almost just one click away like I have the DE and you have the DI yeah and we're on the same FE TI axis <laughs> um that's awesome <clears throat> so tell me a little bit more of how, about how you decided to get typed where where did that come from for you um I was into MBTI um my brother just asked me to do a test because he'd done one at work. So he, he thought that I'd be interested in it. So I did that. And then um, I, yeah, I just was into the MBTI thing. And then uh, a video came up for OPS. So I watched that on YouTube. And then I, I liked it because it seemed a bit more in depth and a bit more scientific. And um, yeah, so I was really intrigued. Yeah. Did you have any initial guesses for your own type, like along the way as you were learning about MBTI and, and later about OP? When I first took the test, I got INFJ and then and then like through those first couple of years, I took the test or different tests or the same tests different times and so many times. And most of the time it came as, up as INFJ. Um, obviously, they only have uh, the NIFE, INFJ with MBTI. So, um, and it all, you know, it all seemed true. And, you know, like people, um, because I was trying to get my friends into it as well, like trying to get them so I knew what their types were. But they weren't really into it. But I kind of asked them, what do you think that I am out of these things? And, I gave them a few options because I had like different ones come up like INFP, INFJ, INPP, INTJ, and I was asking them sort of different questions and stuff, but they said INFJ. So, hmm, interesting. Was it based off uh, the stereotype then, do you think? Or? Yeah, just the little descriptions and sometimes like the odd videos and things like that. So, right. Um, yeah, and then I, I, once I was looking into the OPS thing, I started to question it a, a bit more because I couldn't decide, like, the DI thing came mm -hmm. up and I was, then I started thinking, well, maybe I am an INFP. But then I thought I can't be because everything that they say about TI rings so true to me. So then I thought, oh, maybe I am, like, a, a jumper. I didn't, I didn't know really. But, I mean, it was, was amongst the mix, you know, that, that that's a possibility. So it all made sense. Wow. I wonder, because that means you could really see yourself. And I'm wondering if that has something to do with being sleep first. Because you're processing yeah, self a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Because I wanted to be realistic. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to pretend. Because I, I didn't want to be a certain type. In fact, I, after all the stuff with the MBTI, I actually didn't want to be an INFJ because everyone kind of thinks well if you're an INFJ then you're probably pretending and I was like I, I just wanted to know the truth I wasn't really interested in um you know just wearing some kind of badge and right you know yeah I know very TI of you just wanting to know the truth <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you are a DI and how did you feel about it I mean I guess it wasn't much of a shock for you to get your type back since you already guessed pretty close it it was and it wasn't I mean I I I was it was more of a like a realization and a kind of okay stand back this is this is okay because I really did think I was a, a feeler that was the other thing that was confusing mm -hmm. um so I kind of um you know, I kind of wrestled with that a bit, but, you know, learning more about it. Um, and I think the association with it you have is like, you know, at first coming from the MBTIs, you know, the feelers are, are all about the emotions and the, the, the love and all of that kind of stuff. And I felt like I 
fell into fell into that bracket. And I didn't feel as much like the ENT types of kind of classes, sort of nerds and stuff. And I didn't really feel I could relate to it a bit, but I, like I'm terrible with you know maths and all that kind of stuff that is sort of associated with that kind of thing. But you know, OP obviously opens your eyes to kind of right. Things. Yeah, so you saw you saw the DI and you saw the F. And it's not really that surprising having both functions in the middle, being a double decider. You can kind of easily switch between the two. And also in your yeah. case, having double activated FE, uh, yeah. which makes yeah. it really, really strong. And you're using it mm -hmm. a lot. Um, yeah. So your type would be very hard to see actually or at least in terms of typing you know mm -hmm. um yeah I think yeah. I'd have a hard time typing you <laughs> <laughs> I think depending on um who I'm with as well like some people will see more of the TI side and some people will see more of the FE side um and depending on what what I'm doing and what, what my purpose of being in this group of people is or whatever yeah um, I would definitely always feel I'm very aware of people right uh, right yeah I mean having also blast in the top two as you do it's you you do have a need for the tribe you are kind mm. of an ambivert in that in that sense you are not yeah. really an introvert even if you have sleep first so, yeah yeah you kind of need the tribe to have them around how do you feel about you know, seeking up the tribe. How do you go about that? Like, yeah, how um, does that happen for you? I've got a kind of, um, I suppose, understandably, like a mixed relationship with that because, like, part of part of me just wants to be on my own, doing my thing all day long. And, mm. um, but as you say, like, the other half knows that I need the tribe, and I need, like, I really love hanging out with my friends. Um, but it kind of takes a push. To do it and get me out of my you know my doing this focused thing that I'm usually um mm. concentrating on that's so interesting um, because I can relate to that but just in the opposite way uh, which makes sense yeah. because you're sleep last and I'm blast sleep so my default is kind of seeking towards the tribe but then I know mm. that I need my own time and I I do love it the way you say you love the the tribe mm -hmm. time but it's kind of something I have to remind myself of I, I feel the need strongly but it's not the first thing I go to naturally yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah that makes sense <clears throat> so but I've yeah. learned over the years and I'm sure maybe you have too like in my ca case it's more like I get started as as it is with the blast you know you get started but then with a sleep second, it's like, and then I hit the brakes. So yeah. <laughs> it's not very flowy. It's almost better with your stack because, yes, you are kind of processing for quite a while and doing your your you time. But then when you get started, you have the, the play coming after the blast. So then you are kind of very <laughs> intense, I guess. Would you say? Yeah, that can be quite manic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You, yeah. yeah when, when yeah. you're on you're on mm -hmm. yeah and that again depends on the situation as well and um yeah what's going on around me um but yeah it's it's hard to switch off it is a switch on switch off right kind of thing yeah like you know i think um we had a, a chat before and um when I'm like at, at parties and things like that it's kind of once I'm on I'm in I'm in that zone um mm -hmm. that's definitely what I'm there to do I'm there to you know use the FE and have a good time and everything yeah to the point where I don't want it to stop so that you know that's kind of a contradiction to like what they say about introverts and stuff like that because I actually I I'm kind of sometimes like one of the last to want to stop the Party right. or whatever. yeah I'm not like yeah. the life and soul of the party but I'm kind of like just in that mood in that mood in mm. that zone and then when it comes to an end it's kind of a bit jarring and then I've got to turn it off and then 
mm. and that's back but then it's a lot more effort to actually get in that zone I have to build myself up right to, to do the people and things yeah exactly so you need, need to switch that on like muster up yeah. that energy to actually do the peopling mm -hmm. thing yeah <laughs> and then you're yeah on. yeah yeah and there has to be there's almost like a ritual as well like if I if I know that, that I'm going to be I have to sort of listen to some music like get dressed and I don't know, put makeup on and mm -hmm. kind of get ready and it's like it's almost like um I don't know, maybe like getting ready for a, a, a show or something you know <laughs> like it just feels yeah. like it's something that you've got to prepare yourself for once I'm there Mm -hmm. it feels like it's normal it feels like it, it's not like a big thing mm -hmm. but to build up to doing that it has to come from this build up interesting do you do you feel that you have um, a great need afterwards like you need to wind down for example mm -hmm. say you return back home quite late at night do you have to kind of wind down slowly before you can go to bed or can you just switch it off and and start resting right away um it depends if i'm if, if i've if i've managed to switch off like it depends on the situation i suppose like if i've come back from a party and i get home and i'm still excited and like mm. i'm maybe if me and my partner have been to a party and we're both together mm -hmm. you're either exhausted if it's, if it's late you know then you kind of just mm -hmm. I mean, I can never just switch off. At night time, I, I, I can never go to sleep. I'm, I'm always kind of, I've got a very long wind down time. Um, mm -hmm. Processing time. And Have you ever, right. yeah, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Have you ever kind of measured about how long time do you have to wind down? Oh, uh, hours. <laughs> yeah. If I, um, yeah, I just lay awake and think for a long time it's, it's been like insomnia has been a massive problem all through my life really because I just can't turn my brain off at, right at night. yeah that's interesting um but in terms of winding down why I'm asking is because I'm just kind of comparing notes here with you since we are very similar mm -hmm. I have counted that I have between four and five hours time to you know need for um the down the, the the winding down process for me if I have been doing some you know more energizing activity yeah. and I'm always in admiration of I have some friends they can just you know get back home brush their teeth and they fall asleep right away I'm like how do yeah. you do that like <laughs> yeah that's definitely not me no me neither <laughs> <laughs> what do you do to wind down then like do you do um, consume, like, can you just watch telly or something or I kind of have my consume slash sleep routine I guess I'm doing my introverted functions so basically I probably put something on um, whatever you know YouTube or some show that I'm usually watching maybe a new episode of that or you know even a movie just random you know finding something that seems new and popular but basically, I will not be watching it. It's more in the background. Maybe I will be w watching it for, you know, a few minutes. And usually my thoughts will just wander, you know, away somewhere. And I have my journal. Uh, so I may be journaling or I will be doing some, some hand, you know, crafts, something, work with my hands. Or, yeah, just thinking. I was realizing last night that... I was basically doing nothing, you know, sitting on my couch, not even watching anything, like just <laughs> being like, I'm an expert of being for hours and hours and hours. And if yeah. people saw me, they would be like, what are you doing? Are you watching? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, yeah. I was changing between, I think, eight or nine movies. I gave them like five minutes each in the beginning, just to see if, if anything caught my attention, but they didn't. And then I went back to a show that I'm pretty fond of, but my brain was somewhere else. It couldn't concentrate. Mm -hmm. And then I was practically just sitting there and doing nothing for hours and hours and hours. And I was thinking of it yeah. this morning, like, what did I do? Like, I'm trying to observe <laughs> myself. And I know this is a pattern with me. So this wasn't just last night. This is a pattern with me. 
and I'm not doing anything like sleep is a very interesting function <laughs> it, <laughs> it's very introverted <laughs> can yeah. you relate I see yeah, you laugh. I can <laughs> yeah. I mean yeah I, I could definitely relate to that but I think something that you said earlier that I, that I didn't relate to is um I'm not very good at starting to watch something and then stopping no usually if I, I go not... yeah sorry you, please now the interview no, I just think I just have to have it not not on or be doing something else mm. I mean I do do that sometimes I must like I have things on in the background but once I start to watch it I have to watch the whole thing yeah even if, it, even if I really hate it mm -hmm. and that's really bizarre. like I know I'm consumed last as well but it's just I have to know what happens. Like if I've if I've invested any time into yeah. something, <laughs> I want to see it through. Otherwise, that time's wasted. Yeah, you know what I mean. I you know what that? you mean. Yes, I do get that all the time. I think it's our because we are the same modality, so it's our masculine. We have double masculine consume, so we are kind of obligated to follow through, even if it's last. But yeah. once we commit ourselves, we have to. Even if it's a crappy yeah. movie, we just have to which sucks you know <laughs> it really does but I, I absolutely feel you so probably the one movie that I kept going on which was a really crappy one I will probably finish <laughs> watching it tonight or something you know because it's it's an obligation to follow through but I'm trying to consciously train myself not to do that be a little bit more shallow like the consume saviors and allowing myself to watch something just a few minutes and then switch if I don't like it, you know? Yeah, but we have a lot to do that. <laughs> yeah, and it's really hard, you know, but <laughs> we can do it. <laughs> it should be, it's so stupid, isn't it? Like when you think about it, like I don't yeah. want to watch this thing, well, don't watch it then. <laughs> it's almost like OCD or something. I, I was just yeah. wondering, maybe I shouldn't try and watch that movie again. Maybe I should go against it and I almost feel anxiety just of the thought of it yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah yeah I, I, I get you yeah <laughs> it's so crazy okay Jasmine this is an interview with you I want to hear more about you sorry for taking over a little bit but it's nice yeah, to, no, it's nice to have yeah, yeah. learn more comparison so exactly yeah that's kind of the point of this beta talks mm -hmm. series as well you know comparing notes in the same quadra yeah. Um, but yeah, so basically we both are moving easily between our DE and our DI, but we still have like a preference and you have the sleep first and I have the blast first. Uh, if we talk a little bit about your blast in your pre-talk with me, um, you mentioned something about how your brother saw your blast early age, like in your early 20, 20s, I think you said. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, well, he came to uh, a night out with me and my friends. And um, I I just, I always saw myself as somebody who didn't really talk. Um, very quiet and shy and not very interesting and having no, kind of no power within the group at all. Kind of just, just sort of, just somebody on the edge kind of thing and um he came to one of our nights out or something and he kind of su surprised me because he said that, that that wasn't true and that he was surprised um because he normally saw me at home when I was probably just completely in my DI mode so to see me out and about with friends he said that he did it was really different and that I was really kind of a big part of the group and like he was really surprised at how much I was talking and like being you know what's the word I don't know just in, con just in being... control of the group yeah kind of, yeah yeah just in charge <laughs> and, um, yeah I mean when I get going I can I can talk <laughs> yeah right so, yeah, yeah that, that's you know, interesting yeah go on yeah, just saying a few different people sort of gradually, like my best friend, um, I sort of said, oh, I feel like I'm like this. And she's like, no, you, you do express yourself fine. And and I was like, really? But and I like this. And she said, no, I think I think you're fine. I think you're worrying about nothing. And and then a few different people, like my, my partner, um, you know, said that 
when we first met, she thought I was kind of a lot more extroverted than I am and um, a lot more, probably a lot more FE because she sees a lot more of the DI downtime side. So obviously when you're out, that's when it turns, you know, you're directed more outwards. So yeah, I think she kind of thought that was saying these things. So that's why in my mind, I can't deny these, you know, these patterns of things that people have said. So it's things like that that helps you get to know yourself, isn't it? If you're open to like what people are saying. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's one thing what we see on the inside and another thing what people see from the outside. So mm -hmm. that's interesting to compare your own experience to what, what you hear from the outside and try to fit, like you know, yeah. piece together those two. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it is, it is putting things together. And yeah, like they were saying, um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say now. Um, oh no, don't, don't worry, carry on. <laughs> I've, I've lost it, I'll come back, maybe. Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, I'm thinking like for us as IJs, we don't necessarily want to be in charge, I think, even if we have Blast as a savior. But I think... Yeah we can do it if it's required or if you know if we need to fill a void basically mm -hmm. i have noticed for example at my workplace that people seem to think sometimes that i am in charge even though i'm not <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of interesting like, like just to observe because i'm like i didn't even you know aim for that and so yeah. it, it it seems to be a pattern that is repeating you know over time what have people said then what kind of well for example we have um we have someone coming from the outside to like a psychologist who's kind of guiding the group because i work with autistic kids and mm -hmm. you know there can be some tension sometimes and we need to be like a really tight sort of parents sticking together kind of a group um, so yeah. then you need to to sometimes talk things through and so forth and at some point we had a new psychologist coming over and uh, our boss was not there but another one was like put in in his place so and when this psychologist came to the group she was like okay Alexa so since you are the boss and I was like wait what <laughs> not the boss not even close <laughs> and I felt sorry for my colleague who was you know um yeah <laughs> what was so... your was the boss actually there then sorry was the boss there when somebody said that you're the boss no she, he, he was away so there was someone in place of him who was supposed to be the boss you know and I don't know what, what that is. Maybe it's the blast, but I think she's a blaster as well. So I don't really know what that, that is. Um, maybe it's mm -hmm. the NI, you know, the overview thing that we are able to do. Mm -hmm. um, we seem to, you know, keep track of things. And yeah, in, in a bigger sense. I don't know. Just happened. And, and it's not the first. So yeah, interesting. So I thought it yeah. was interesting that your your brother commented on that as well that you yeah. were in control of the group <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's like um yeah like even here at home it seems like sometimes like everybody asks me what to do mm. like, in any situation but i don't know any more than you guys right but it's like yeah. i'm always the one who's kind of asked about anything i suppose that like decision making I suppose like um it's always what should we do and I'm like, I, I don't know <laughs> yeah right I wonder if that is the intuition after all I'm just thinking about it now like somehow it can seem very confident you know the NI mm. well Maybe we can sleep process that separately yeah. <laughs> once again. So tell me a little bit more about what are you doing in life? Like, and how do, does your functions play into that? Um, I'm an artist. Um, so yeah, so I get to have a lot of alone time. A lot, a lot. <laughs> so a lot I can, 
yeah, sleep and just complete, you know, raise a focus on one thing. Um, and yeah, I, I, I really like the balance of things <laughs> like that because it gives me an excuse to do all of my saviors and I don't really have to deal a lot with <laughs> the demons. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I, I do feel like it's, um, it is a bit um, insular at times. Um, yeah, but I, it is a very introverted thing to be doing. Um, right. When you say an artist, what do you mean by that? What is it do you do as an artist? I'm a, I'm a painter at the moment. Um, I like to do, I like to do any kind of creative stuff and artistic stuff I mean I'm doing painting um, mostly now um, but I kind of dabble in other things as hobbies you know other creative things um, I used to be all about all into music um, <clears throat> but kind of swapped over to art sort of more recently right that's interesting so tell me more about the music and how you got into that and then how come you swapped over to the artsy art um I always, um, I've always been interested in music. Uh, I've always written songs ever since I was old enough to write. I used to have stacks and stacks of books, um, mm. notebooks and things. I used to write a song every single night um, from about, well, till I was about maybe 16 or when you start having to go out at nights and things. And that, so I was very rigid. It had to be one every night, at least one. Sometimes I did two or three or whatever. So that was always something that I did. Wow. And, um, so you actually did like one or sometimes two or three like complete songs? Yeah. And I, every I had to night? Every night, yeah. For <laughs> yeah. years and years. Like you have, a, you have thousands of songs. Yeah. I had books and books of wow. songs. Yeah. That's so cool. Exercise books. <laughs> do, do you remember the songs or? or... Um, I mean, some of them pop into my head even even now. Mm -hmm. It's weird because one song I wrote when I was about twelve. We kind of later on I was in a band and then we we ended up recording that song, which was cool. A bizarre, bizarre song, but it was kind of funny thinking I wrote this when I was twelve. You know, <laughs> and it wasn't really it was just this really random song, <laughs> but it had new meaning when I was older. So. Exactly, that's the the interesting thing with art, like it can be interpreted in so many ways so it's never too old somehow mm -hmm. yeah and other people can interpret things their own way as well if mm -hmm. they see something like in a painting or something or yeah it's not uncommon if somebody's listening to a song and it, like you feel like they're talking to you don't you if, mm -hmm. if it's a certain about a certain thing right <clears throat> yes isn't that the point of art like Mm -hmm. that deep thoughts and feelings that you may not be able to always express will be portrayed in one way or another with tones yeah. or drawings or yeah paintings or whatnot so we kind of feel that we are seen and we feel that we are a part of a bigger whole like not as alone maybe mm -hmm. yeah think. yeah it's, it's like a communication isn't it but without words sort mm. of, um, communication of the internal stuff that can't always you haven't always got the language for it have you some some things exactly yeah so you were writing a lot of songs and you were playing in a band and and now you are an artist like drawing and, and painting and, and stuff so what made you transition <laughs> um I think <laughs> I really hated gigging. Uh, that was a major, major problem. Um, like, my, like stage my fright friend. or? Yeah. Yeah. Huge, huge, huge. stage yeah. fright. It was just really stressful. My friend had to um, have to kind of come in the bathroom to try and get me out sometimes because I was sort of just sitting there in the cubicle and I was like in the middle of you know, almost having panic attacks. And mm -hmm. whenever I had a gig coming up, um, that day before the gig I couldn't do anything so I had to spend the whole day practicing the set making sure I knew everything because I used to forget the words and forget all of the songs because I was so stressed about it mm -hmm. so I'd have to go through it the whole day and just like write out set lists and yeah it was like a, there was a lot of 
I could just turn up and just play mm. and and I had to you know even when I was um you know getting ready to go on stage I'd have to have two guitars in case one broke and make sure they were both tuned oh. up and then I'd have I'd have like several of everything and I was just scared of, I, I guess it's the um observer freak out things. thing yeah out. yeah this is going to go wrong this could go wrong this could go wrong yeah and then overall like just worried about like I wasn't a very good singer um I wasn't I didn't want to be the singer I wanted to just write the songs and then just play I wanted to be a drummer initially but it was oh, me cool. and my two friends from school mm. so we all kind of just we just kind of we all just did a blasty thing of just getting together and just doing it we didn't even know our instruments at the time um mm-hmm. like we had one lesson me and my friend um she was a bassist in the end we had one lesson cool I <laughs> and then yeah the rest of it I just did because I just wanted to write the song mm. so I just thought well I'll just get a, I had a, a book of chords and I just used whatever chords I needed for, for that particular song mm-hmm Again, with the consume last, I guess I didn't learn how to play all the notes and then write songs. I just like, okay, this is the song I hear in my head. Now, how can I work this out on guitar? So it was a lot of just fiddling around. That's not right. That's not right. That's not right. Oh, that's right. Right. That kind of. <laughs> yeah, trial and error, basically. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a very good example of what blast looks like in real life. You just yeah. get started and, just... and go from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah what were you saying? Because um, you do music as well. Um, yeah, I do. I That's think... also kind of just getting started sort of a thing. <laughs> I've been yeah. working um, with the special needs kids for some years. And after a while, I felt that I wanted to do more or something else. You know, you want to improve yourself. You want to grow and all that so I was thinking of how to tie things together like different areas of interest that I have but still mm-hmm. staying there in my you know OI box because I really like this yeah. job <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah and I, at the time I had a boss who was very into music himself and we kind of shared that interest so I mean, I'm not educated when it comes to music, but I'm just very interested. And I always used to, you know, learn things for myself. Got myself a guitar when I was 12. And as a grown up, I finally bought a piano, something that I have dreamt of doing, you know, my whole life. But I never, you know, did. I didn't even know why I didn't. You know, it's kind of a DE thing, I think. You don't give yourself permission and finally we got this bonus um, extra salary at work because we had been you know doing so well and I was like oh this is new money that I didn't count on having what should I do because this is for me you know that's how they put it like it's for you and I'm like oh now I have the permission that's crazy (laughs) but yeah so I I went and I bought the piano finally (laughs) So yeah, but I'm just self-taught and and I, I do write songs the same as you. I haven't been writing one song every night since I was 12, but you know, every once in a while expressing feelings yeah. and things like that. So I was just thinking of is there a possibility to maybe tie this together? I I had read about how how music therapy can be very helpful uh, when it comes to for example disabilities as autism in terms of helping them to be able to communicate better, be more open to communication and, you know, uh, th- that kind of thing. So I was a bit interested in, you know, just experimented and experimenting and see where, where that possibly could go. Yeah. And since I had a very <laughs> open-minded boss and he was into music himself, he more or less just gave me a budget and, and he threw me that and he just said, well, go do what you think is a good idea you know just build something oh, which was great amazing. yeah so he was he really had confidence in my idea so I built a, a music room at at my workplace so now we have it and I then started on my own experimented with students and kind of built up uh, a way of working with it and then I have um found another colleague who's also into music and 
encouraged her to come as a helper. And now we also have a new employee who is also into music. So now it's all three of us kind of alternating and doing this. So yeah, it's really awesome. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, that's kind of also an example of blast because mm -hmm. I was, I didn't know at all what I was doing, you know, yeah. <laughs> whatsoever. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So that's oh, I guess. good. And now you're doing it as, as part of your job then. Yeah, yeah. It's actually now it's a bigger part of my job that than my original work, you know. <laughs> so yeah. That's a cool boss then you've got. He's kind of the quite best, open then. The best yeah. I've ever had. Yes. I think he 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 moved on, so he's in another place now, but we worked together for a long time. And I think he's some sort of ISTP. And yeah great person great boss so i was yeah. really lucky to have him oh, yeah cool. that's this feels like an interview about me <laughs> why are you turning this around are you de <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, i'm just interested because um oh i'm interested in that 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 dynamic with you saying that you had to give yourself permission as well um, right you haven't because, experienced that tell me more well because well I have but like I'm very aware of like what what I would want in a situation mm -hmm. and like, I don't I don't necessarily think to myself I like I don't have permission like I I don't it's not that I expect to have something but it's kind of like okay well this would be really cool how how do I get it <laughs> mm -hmm. I, yeah so, so how does the order in your in your mind go? Like, if you, yeah, kind of... I guess I'm working from my, I'm working my way from the outside in, you know. So basically, I'm seeing, for example, in this instance, I'm seeing the kids. You know, they need another tool that we don't have yet for being, you know, for communication to be able to communicate better. And then I, I see that need from the outside. Then I can go to me, like, is there something I can do, you know? Yeah. And that I'm still OI. So that is, you know, in my, in, in line of my yeah. interest. So then it's kind of a combination. And that's how I can give myself permission because this is really needed, you know, here. And I can yeah. see that I can contribute. Yeah, exactly. And I can see <laughs> that I can contribute to them. And of course... Mm -hmm. In the meanwhile, I will also experience, you know, the benefits the benefit. of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so would you say that that you get um, more benefit from from experiencing others having something than you do like having something experiencing something that you've always wanted or? Um. Yeah, I usually always talk about a win-win. <laughs> I think that's kind of yeah. a DE thing. I don't know. But yeah, so I feel, I think I feel the happiest when both the tribe and I, you know, are um, happy. And um, the word happy is so overused for the end. <laughs> Let's switch I know what it. you mean. Fulfilled is a better word. Yeah. Um, <laughs> satisfied, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> that we're doing the thing that we love, you know, the thing yeah. that we like, and uh, that we can kind of combine co combine the two, so that it's not just, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know how to express that. So, how do you see that in you? Do you see it differently or very similarly? I'm just thinking because you said like doing the thing that you love, and the thing that you love it kind of involves other people yeah so the uh, but the things that you love for you involves other people kind of thing yeah well, I think for me the things that the things that I love for me involve just me right and <laughs> there is where our like functions go yeah but if I'm in if I'm around other people mm -hmm. then I, I would be the same as you and I'd want everything to be even and like I'm making sure everybody's happy like best best for best of all worlds right yes but the things that I love for me comes from like just being on my own mm -hmm. I mean, part, I, obviously I like 
enjoy spending time with other people but I'm, I mean I'm talking about like so you know like job satisfaction and stuff like that like you obviously get a lot of um job satisfaction from like helping everybody around you at work mm-hmm. because I think when I'm at work like with jobs where I've been working with other people um I've just I found it more difficult I'm much better working on my own than, mm-hmm. than with other people so I can't focus when there's too much right that's an interesting difference between the two of us because I mm. feel just quite the opposite I cannot mm. focus if I'm alone ah so I will be better at focusing and doing my job if mm. I interact if I'm able to blast first before yeah sleep, you know yeah so yeah I'm like an engine that is not getting started until the people is, you know, if they are there, then I get started. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's, that's really, that's really good. That's a really good difference. Because obviously, we're so similar. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just that order of what, how things happen, isn't it? Yes. Really interesting. Yeah, because if I'm on my own, and there is no pressure from the outside like I need to blast for the tribe somehow share information or guide them or you know help them Mm -hmm. out somehow which is my default wiring Um, I will easily just thinking to my old you know sleep processing that isn't really job related and I'm not there to do my own sleep (laughs) I'm there to work you know so for me it's very good to work with people so that I'm actually keeping my focus on on my work you know yeah Yeah. and I love it when I I do that I love it I love interacting and I love you know having them around yeah yeah I'm just very I'm so one track that I I find like if there's anything any other kind of in a in a work situation any other opinions like if I had to work in a team on on a piece of art I'd just get I know that it would just become I would have no opinion then it would just be all about them and I'd get no satisfaction because I wouldn't be able to do the thing that I wanted to do oh yeah yeah I get that so, yeah, yeah so, and, that, and that really kind of then I couldn't do anything that I loved and I wouldn't be able to do art or anything like that I'd just be in a job any old any old job it wouldn't really matter because I know what I'd know whatever it was it would just be um mm. something that that didn't involve me and what like who I was kind of mm-hmm. it's hard to explain really but um I'm not making this point very, very well I think you are actually I, I get what you are saying so basically if you were around the tribe then the big the greater good the DE would kind of you know take over or mm-hmm. yeah, yeah decide what is the most important there wouldn't be enough space for you and your particular interests yeah so and your yeah, way so of doing your thing is to separate yourself yeah 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 that's yeah that's it yeah but I then, think that's why that switch is such a hard switch sometimes because mm-hmm. I have to have I have to, it like I said about the switch like coming back from a party like switching that off but mm-hmm. it's also I think even more jarring if I'm on my own painting and I'm in my mind like doing my thing and then somebody comes in and says hello you don't have to speak for a moment I can't take in anything because it's just Mm. it's just such a it's like being ripped from reality and put into what of course it's not reality it's my mind but it feels like you're being ripped out of that right yeah it's your yeah it's your reality more real than real world in in a way (laughs) Because I'm being dragged into the sensory world of like all this chaotic stuff, and um, I can't, I can't understand what's going on for a while, and it kind of makes me quite grumpy if I'm suddenly just suddenly pulled out of it. Yeah. But if I kind of know that this time I stop, so then I give myself some like coming coming out of my cave time. So like I say, okay, like my daughter will be back at four, and then we, we do the tea. So I like to know exactly what what's happening just so mm. I can have time to come out of that right yeah let's talk a little bit more about that real world thing (laughs) the (laughs) se at last that we have um taking in random new from the world 
Um, so, yeah, H how is it for you, like the whole sensory overload thing that you were describing? Tell me more about your experience with that, and then we can compare a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a difficult thing to talk about in relationship to the personality type thing, because I also have ME, so I don't know how much of that is part of my condition and how much of it is my personality type. Um, I do relate to, as you mentioned, like Dave saying stuff about he's quite sensitive to colours, things like that. Um, I definitely get overwhelmed by um, all sorts of sensory stuff. If um, if it's like a really bright day and we're driving in the car and there's things going fast and there's music on and that like I just feel my energy just going and I can't if there's lots of people talking I, I guess this is why I find groups difficult because I'm I can focus on a one-to-one -one. I just have to focus on one thing but as soon as there's like several people talking then I kind of just withdraw a bit and I don't know where to put my focus right um, I can totally relate to that I think that is the dilemma of being sensory last especially and um, especially if you are a sleep savior I think it's just so draining for us and it's hard for people around that do not have the same <laughs> kind of function stack or yeah animatronics as we do to to relate it's almost like we are closing ourselves off from the world but it's yeah. it's it's for protection as you say yeah. we're getting so drained and our day is basically over just by, you know, being exposed <laughs> to a few things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. This is uh, like we mentioned in our pre talk um, about, um, oh, damn it, I've done it again. I forgot what I was talking about. Um, so the sensory overload, we were talking about sounds, I think. And um, um, now you mentioned bright light, music a lot of talk around um i forgot my point so we're just the other aspect. yeah let's see maybe it, it'll return you know feminine and i <laughs> we do tend to forget <laughs> yeah, the patterns that yeah. we want to talk about um i was thinking about how dave once said that he can be very very sensitive to intense colors mm. at making him seems like he almost gets a bit aggressive yeah <laughs> <And there are bright, laughs> bright colors yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's an example and i remember also my type twin dan when he was here he explained that when he was walking he kind of had to walk very carefully because if he was putting down the foot you know too intensely too hard it would create a sound in his body that was really vibration yeah a vibration is a better world word so something that would kind of make him really annoyed you know <laughs> somehow yeah. so he was yeah treading carefully because of that yeah so, the squishy trainers or yeah right and i know with myself i have the audio thing going on like mm. i really hate some sounds and I can get so annoyed, super annoyed. I'm just trying to remain calm, you know, on the surface mm -hmm. because I feel, but it's so frustrating. And yeah. Um, yeah. And even voices can be, if, if they sound a little bit, you know, stressed or aggressive in the tone of voice or something like that, it, it's really closing me off from whatever they are trying to say it's like if the vibe somehow is disrupted I can't even take in the information like I'm overly sensitive yeah. to and I, I guess that's an emotional aspect so so sounds mm -hmm. from the environment is more the audio thing and yeah. then the vibe thing like sounds with the, that indicates a vibe that is off mm -hmm um angry voices and so forth relate to that. Uh, yeah the tell vibe me yeah somebody's talking in a um a different tone or making sort of noises or puffing or even if they sort of sit down differently or anything kind of mood oriented or anything i kind of 
I really, really get stressed. But I suppose that's the that's the FE thing. But it it really, really stresses me out to hear mm -hmm. all those kinds of things. So how does that yeah. work for you then? Like, do you feel that you have to kind of fix, address this problem right away, or do you just remove yourself from that situation? Or um, I definitely want to fix it, so I'll I'll probably process it first and think what. What does it mean? What's what could it be about? What uh, is it? Is it real? Because <laughs> I know that has to be a question that I ask nowadays. Mm. Um, and yeah, try and try and assess the situation. Make sure that like my thoughts aren't just you know paranoid thoughts of like um, you know just assuming that somebody's in a mood when they're not or you know whatever. Yeah. Right. And, but I definitely get this need to kind of fix it. Um, I, do, I I think nowadays more I I I try to talk things through. Like I used to probably um, be quite subtle in trying to uh, well sort of kind of skirting around the point. And but nowadays I kind of try to address things like more directly because otherwise. Mm. It can, it can be otherwise just everybody's walking on eggshells kind of right you know, and you're being but, so subtle sometimes I think as an INFJ that people don't even notice that you were trying to say something uh, I think the thing is like because you assume that everybody's like you and so you're giving off cues that you get and nobody responds to those cues and so I, I, I think a lot of people probably do that kind of assume that everybody's a mind reader and right yeah. I think like even I, I just feel like everything I do, even if it's small, is big. Like even if I do like a like a hand movement or something like that, or or if everybody's sort of kind of dancing and I sort of do that, mm -hmm. I feel like I've done something huge. And then it's only when I see it back that I realise that actually that movement that I thought was really crazy or that gesture or whatever is actually a lot less than I thought it was. So now I'm kind of feeling a bit more free to move because I've seen this a few times and I think, okay, well I can actually yeah so. yeah maybe because we are very sensitive uh, for many reasons uh, when it comes to the signals from the outside mm -hmm. both the sensory signals as well as the the vibes and yeah. maybe it's easy to think that others are as well mm. which isn't the case always no mm -hmm. interesting do you want to tell us more about the the ME thing? Like, what is ME for for people? Maybe not everyone knows. Um, I think a lot of people think of it as something where you just get tired a lot because it's also known as chronic fatigue. So I think mm -hmm. people just think, oh, it's just when you feel tired, and that is one symptom. Although it's not really tiredness, it, it is exhaustion. Um you kind of wake up in the morning and you don't know how many things you'll be able to do so everything that you do takes away a lot of energy mm. and that's not necessarily physical things so it's not just um like oh you know walking and having a wash and having a shower and get, getting up getting dressed all of those things take away like um units of energy mm. but it's it's the cognitive processes so it's it's having conversations or um writing something reading something looking at things with bright colors or things that are moving like i said before any any of those sensory things right um, maybe interactions yeah, with people yeah yeah well. anything you've got to think about but i wonder if like emmy as a as an illness i don't know if like firstly like if different types would experience different things being more um energy depleting so like mm -hmm. but because our our type has a lot of this sensory overload whether because I definitely noticed for me it's like definitely more of a sensory um depletion than it is even a physical one I feel like sometimes I can do more with my body mm -hmm. but I can do less with um like physically going out and listening to music or those kind of things they kind of deplete me more but also like you know Dave and Shan they talk about clustering around in illnesses around certain types and I would be interested to know if there was a correlation 
between like the INFJ sort of type and uh, things like ME and mm-hmm. um, that kind of thing. That would be really interesting. Yeah, I'd I'd like to know that too. Um, yeah, I know too. Sorry. Yeah, I'm 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 just thinking like being energy dom and um, I don't know what I was going to say, but but I also feel I don't have me, but I'm just thinking of the the whole thing of reg- regulating your energy is kind of our main struggle here in life. And uh, so it's actually, it it makes sense that like a disease like that would maybe be able to cluster around our Mm. types. Yeah, because I I know two other INFJs. One of them has ME Mm -hmm. and one of them does have trouble with a lot of fatigue and aches and pains and things like that. Mm -hmm. And they're the only people who I talk to kind of in real life of the same personality type. So right. that's, just, that's another sort of connection. I don't know if it's legitimate or not, or whether it's just a coincidence. But... Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Even if it's a really, really small pattern, it, it's uh, sure interesting to know more about. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Do you find that when you finally fall asleep that you can sleep for a long time or...? How is your sleep in general? <clears throat> Again, I don't know how much of it is to do with the ME because I think insomnia is a thing in that. Although I have always, always struggled with sleep from like really little, probably because I was up all night writing songs. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I, I've, I've always struggled with sleep and that there's been periods in my life where it's been really serious, where I've had long, long long periods of time where I've had to get by with like two or three hours sleep and wow. not being very well because of it and again I'm not sure what the reasons are like stress probably and stuff like that but again like I don't know which comes first whether it's just the personality type thing or that is interesting and I I just recall now that there is another one of your type possibly she was ff but your exact type other than that who had a very similar struggle not someone i know personally but someone i've come across um during my time here in op so yeah i'm just now remembering that what you're saying applies to her like almost exactly it could be her talking yeah so that's interesting yeah Yeah, so um, the sensory overload, the ME, and then the consume last. Um, So I'm jumping a bit here, but it's still related to being an energy dom, right? So we have consume last and the other energy doms, they have blast last. Um, So how do you see your consume last like is it um would you agree that it is last how do you feel about the the when i first got my title i was i was surprised Mm -hmm. because um i i felt like i thought i was play last and i thought i was probably not consumed first but i didn't think i was consumed last just because i do consume pretty much all day every mm. day even right. if it's in the background I'm usually consuming whilst I'm blasting though or whilst I'm doing something so mm-hmm. I don't know how much that happens. but it is the old um you know looking back after being typed then going back and looking at some of um the OP videos on consume and stuff and I mm-hmm. kind of was chuckling to myself a bit and sort of thinking yeah that's you know they did that one about that guy who known for reading a book a day or or oh yeah, I can't remember. And they were saying how <clears throat> you know it was like such a big thing for him, and he probably wasn't reading the whole lot necessarily or, or whatever. But no. I, it definitely, yeah, I own a lot more books than I would probably ever read in the <laughs> for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, mm. Yeah, I love the idea of books, but book reading isn't really 
my thing. Um, Has it reality. been like earlier when you were younger or anything? I I really haven't read many books. <laughs> right. No, I mean, yeah. if I do, it's usually um, uh, not a. It's usually nonfiction, and it's usually about. It used to would have been either about like a biography about somebody, a band that I like, or something like that. Mm. Or it'll be something related to something that I'm doing at the at the moment. So yeah. like now I'd probably just read art books or art business or OP stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I tend to if I'm going to read, it's usually going to be online things. Mm-hmm. But I tend to do I tend to listen to more stuff. So I'm usually on YouTube, or, or I think probably most of my consumer will be YouTube based. But it's again. It's such a narrow, um, a narrow base of, mm. uh, yeah, just only just, I mean, probably the only things that I'm listening to now is um, OP stuff, art stuff, and then I watch, I don't know if you've had Good Mythical Morning, I watch that for a bit of like light relief when I'm like, mm. can't take in anymore, <laughs> yeah. I just need a bit of break. But that's that's all. And I've actually gone around and I've watched all of their series like in a row and I kind of even know what's coming. So mm-hmm. that means I can just paint and not even have to watch. I'm just kind of just just kind of in the background, just feeling like there's people, but without having to be around people. Right. Yeah. Just like invisible company, not yeah <laughs> making any demands or disturbing <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> and just shut them up at any point yeah that's <laughs> great <laughs> yeah that's so interesting so yeah because that is how the last animal usually operates I have been talking to Antoine I don't know if you saw the interview I had with him yeah. here and yeah. Um, yeah he's been doing quite a bit of sleep processing on the animals and how they operate differently depending on where in the stack they are so we are going to share a little bit of that info in a near future. So all all that you are saying makes perfect sense. Um, that you are actually consuming on a very deep level, on a very mm. specific level. And um, yeah, we are more of, since we are so narrow, we become more of experts. We don't have the breadth but we have the depth yeah. yeah so it's like on spotify like uh, not spotify um on whatsapp me and my friends are always talking and they're always talking about like have you seen this thing on netflix have you seen that thing mm. have you seen this thing or no we haven't oh you'd like this? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the answer <laughs> yeah <laughs> everything and i was like no mm. and i can sort of say oh oh i've watched i've watched the thing have has anyone seen this thing and it's like yeah. the first the only thing i've three years or something like has anyone has anyone seen that right but yeah, yeah. We watched that three years ago when it came out oh okay yeah that's <laughs> the thing like I, I I feel that I'm taking in random new and then it's like <laughs> oh it's been around for 13 years already yeah. and I have never <laughs> yeah. heard of it but now it's new to me and I'm like enjoying yeah. the full show with all six seasons you know while yeah. the rest <laughs> of the population they had to wait you know for the episode to be released so it's yeah a pretty good thing I think sometimes yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get it all when yeah. when you finally discover it yeah oh, well, sometimes just, some people just have to do one season then when that one's over it's like which which next box set should we watch which next box set and it's like uh-huh. well you know like this I can't even I can't imagine like I watched the Game of Thrones um thing and I invested so much time in that and mm-hmm. I can't imagine embarking on something like that again. It's just, it's just <laughs> how <laughs> like, come? Oh God, just it just it takes up so much time, and like, what 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 things will I have to stop doing in order to yeah like, fit all of that in? Like, I just don't know. I just I don't know how people fit it in. Like, it's not it's not it's not what I do to relax either no it's it's a, a chore more of a chore yeah and, and I and I watched that just because everybody was talking about it and I thought we were really sure and I and I'd only watched it like after it was you know 
pretty much the last season. I haven't seen the very last season because mm. we'd got to the end of where we were at and then like then that became the new, so we haven't actually seen that mm. <laughs> the last one. But, but yeah, it was I came to it really late on. Right. Then I had to I mean it helped but that was before I had a baby. So Right. Yeah. Baby. I'm wondering, right. like, just out of curiosity, but was this connected to the tribe somehow, or did you choose it all by yourself? Oh yeah, just definitely everybody just saying, "Are you happy? Are you watching this?" It was just everywhere, and everyone was mm. talking about it. Even so, yeah, within the close family, like, like you watched yeah, it together with too. someone, or did you watch it on your own? Oh, I watched it with my partner. Um, yeah. I, I I said like that makes sense. Gonna... Yeah, like you're yeah, sharing that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was guessing. <laughs> I just wanted you to say it yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna sit down and let's be know. honest. Yeah, and it's probably not the kind of thing that I would ever have chosen to watch. Just but like you know things with dragons and stuff in it. It's it's not really my. I can't, if I watch something, I like it to be sort of real. Legal. Yeah, like something that yeah, and I tend to stay away from things that are a bit more, maybe even a bit more like intuitive kind of like even things like Harry Potter and all the stuff that I feel like I'm supposed that to like. That is like, so interesting. Yeah, like sorry for interrupting you, but I was just I thinking, know. we are yeah, I'm goofy energy dom right now, but yeah, like yeah. so I was thinking of that today. Shan, she actually said that. The STs are often consuming these, you know, like astrology and um, having a lot of, you know, they have tarot cards and doing a lot of this NF stuff, you know. And oh. and I was thinking, wow, because me as actual an actual NF, I really don't like those kind of things. Like when it's too, as you say, too intuitive or too woo woo. I just yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Reject it right away. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's too. fake. I don't like that. Or that's yeah. spooky. I don't like that, you know, for whatever reason. But <laughs> yeah. I don't like it. I want yeah. something to be very, actually more ST <laughs> in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's yeah, the thing. Weird. So the STs are going after the NF and, and the other way around, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. I just, yeah, I just assumed that, um, I don't know what everybody's consuming. I've got no idea. <laughs> What other people are looking at until they all say like have you seen this thing and whatnot. Hmm. But yeah that's interesting that you said that yeah that, that <clears> is <throat> interesting I, I just uh, realized and now what you said about the harry potter thing just yeah fit into that thought that i already had today so. yeah <laughs> not nothing against harry potter or anything it's like it's really good but i kind of just it's not something that i would start to watch right yeah yeah it totally makes sense to me too i never watched it by the way yeah um so yeah now everyone knows that about me <laughs> but you know i'm going to be proud of myself um yeah, yeah let's okay. see here if there's anything else that i really wanted to ask you about um yeah something more about maybe your sleep before we end so you told me in the pre-talk that you actually were able to see your sleep. So in, in what way could you see your sleep? How, how did you? <clears throat> yeah, just, um, I, I just couldn't really deny that the amount of time I spend processing and, and just being quiet in my head and just, like you said, self-processing and it's kind of what I spent all my time doing, like when everybody else is consuming, probably. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I just really, really in my in my own head and trying to work things out. Um, and it really is the NI, the NT sleep. So it is um, just trying to work things out, get to the bottom bottom things, and working out what's what's real what's going to happen mm -hmm. and like thinking what's the how do they say like the consequences of stuff um and visualizing future possibilities and and just just not being able to read anything without 
stuff like, in. <laughs> that stuff in the process. I can read like the sentence a million times and I've not read it because I'm thinking about it. And then it's exactly. kind of like, okay, go back. And then like the next paragraph is like, oh, hang on, what was that last bit again? And, and that's why it takes me, that's why books, I, that's why I can't do books really, because it just, I think when you watch something, it kind of moves on. You're not as in control because it's like, okay, well, I've got to keep watching because it's just continuing. But mm. in books, it's like your time. So you can kind of just keep going back and back and back. And that's kind of what I do. And it just yeah. takes me so long. To read. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you have sleep over consume, you are obligated to process before you go and take yeah. the new. That's so I understand. Yeah. It's really a yeah. slow and a tedious process. So you yeah. can see that you were processing a lot and that it was a savior. You could see that. Yeah, I didn't I didn't necessarily know it was first. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I thought. I didn't really have specific orders for things. I thought I was play last. Um that was the thing that I could see maybe the least, but I don't I think it's probably the one that I least understand mm -hmm. as well. Because mm -hmm. I kind of get sometimes like playing last mixed up and um Yeah. Yeah. And and because of some of the things that they say about sleep con like makes me think I were like like I can't be I couldn't be play because I'm so I'm not really um I didn't feel like I was pinging with the tribe but apparently mm. I am a bit <laughs> a bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's uh, interesting too what play really is I'll get into that soon here on this channel so let's continue yeah. talking about it soon but yeah, yeah I really like yeah it's really interesting there are so many things uh, with you that is uh, exciting to me um yeah what was i thinking yeah you you also mentioned that you were nostalgic do you want to mm -hmm. say something about that um i i definitely do look look back and um I like to look at old photos and capture capture the moments in, in photographs and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, yeah, I think it's more in that kind of way, looking back at looking back at photos and thinking of the past. Um, all of the, a lot of those elements that's associated with SI. I don't relate to most of the things associated with SI, but that kind of stuff I do. Um, mm. memories of things and is it quite, personal got... your personal yeah. photos or photos in general like um, historical ah uh, um I think both I think it's just um just this idea of there's been people and lives and what their lives would have been like just that kind of just um like if I saw a photo of like when we me and my mum and my nan we used to listen, uh, listen we used to look at photos um old family photos and there'd be sometimes people in those photos that nobody knew who they were and that used to really get into my head because I kind of felt sad that nobody knew who they were and then it would make me wonder who they were and what they were doing the photos and how mm how my fam my you know my nan or you know other other relatives I never met like her mum and you know other ancestors how 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 they knew these people and like what their stories were and um just all those kind of things I don't know if you'd call that sentimental or I don't really know what you'd what you'd call that but deep thinking <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's interesting yeah. because I can relate to, uh, as I told you before, that I used to walk on uh, in the cemeteries and just watch, yeah. you know, the the tombstones and and reading, you know, who who is there, who used to, you know, be alive. When did he or she die? And yeah, maybe that was a soldier during the World War Two because he was really young when he died, and you know the time. And all that and kind of imagining yeah. the people because those people were as real as we are like we are just here yeah. for a fraction of eternity of time and yeah 
it's fascinating somehow to think about um you know reality maybe that's what we are processing what is reality and how we experience it and i think it's a lot of ni tied to that as well also the timeline thing that you were talking about maybe you want to mention mm -hmm. that i think it ties into this a bit as well yeah um yeah because you were saying how um like our types are kind of in the already in the future and like our our our, our life is based on kind of looking back like instead of like we're not looking forward into the future but we're looking back from the future right yeah like and, the, the movie the benjamin button movie like we start in the wrong yeah. place in a way we go backwards <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and i think i think even from when i was really tiny i would be thinking of how i would be when i was you know old and like mm. on my death almost i know it's like a morbid thing um but that's that's where i that's where i come from really it's how i how i process life is from that end point and what which is why like so i keep a lot of things you know going back to the sentimentality thing because, mm -hmm. because i'm thinking of the me at the at the end and what those things would mean to me if i still had them and the memories that they would bring back and i like i when I when I'm with somebody, sometimes I I kind of think back and I think forward from so I'm thinking today and think back as if I'm there. So even now, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I I kind of think like that was the last time I saw that person. Like sometimes when I'm with someone, I, I'm kind of thinking, what if that was, what if that's the last time I see them? Like I know it's like a a morbid thing, but sometimes like these things do. I don't know how I'm supposed everybody thinks like that a bit I don't know it's not really something oh yes people... I do <laughs> oh, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah it's always kind of being aware of the end because we mm -hmm. kind of that's our first assumption or or yeah like we know that this is going to end we just don't know how or when you know mm -hmm. uh, the reason and so forth but we know it will end yeah. so somehow it's almost like grieving like you start by grieving and yeah. then you can be happy after you mm -hmm. know and actually enjoy things while i can feel that the more normal approach would be to you know oh this is great it's awesome and then maybe in the end you will be sad and disappointed yeah. you know but it's like the other way for us somehow mm -hmm. I, I do feel like that in in my life actually i feel like when i was younger um I was so depressed and I it was there was like definite obsession with you know the, the fact that there's an end to your life and like really just trying to deal with all of that mm. and I feel like now I'm in a better place now than I was because I didn't I didn't um kind of fight against those feelings and the, or like stop them or because some people are quite good at blocking all of that stuff I mean as humans of course we're all going to think about those things but Mm -hmm. I think that the degree and the obsessive nature in which you allow those things or be allowed to process them mm. might de might vary a bit between people because there's I've met a few people who kind of don't they just say oh, I don't don't really think about that till it happens it's like I, I can't I can't switch it off I can't I don't know how to not think about those things exactly. or process those. yeah I don't know how I really don't know how I wish I could mm. kind of I wish I could I don't know. I, I just don't know how I should even go about. I think it's out. just part of our nature. It's just part of our NI and maybe TI as well. It's it's just part of us. And to me, at least, it's not even uncomfortable. It's just part of who we are. Like, yeah. yeah. So I don't know if we even need to, you know, value that as good or bad. It's just. Yeah. There. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, thinking about it, actually, you are Sadhguru's twin type, and he does a lot of processing <laughs> in that realm as well and shares it with people. And I was listening to something today with him and where he said that um, there is an end and, you know, ra whether you are aware of it or thinking about it or not, the time is moving at the exact same pace for everyone. and. Yeah. that's where we are heading um to the future and the way it looks at least 
for now, because I have an eye, is that we end up dying, right? But maybe it's mm -hmm. not always going to be that way. But right now it is, and it has been historically. So, yeah, that's where we're heading now. And he was talking about this, like that the awareness of it can also be a good thing. I'm not going to go into the whole blast about this. Um, I actually am going to stop myself right now. But anyways, I think it was interesting oh. that the theme in itself, I, I can give you the link after, but the theme yeah, in itself yeah. was the very same theme that you are kind of processing in your life yeah. and what I am also processing in my life. And maybe that is very type related. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's also so. the kind of thing that you only really process on your own. Like it's not the kind of thing that you kind of, talk about with you know you don't um you don't not oh, sorry oh, I don't know how to turn it off <laughs> it's going to be falling down sorry um what was I saying yeah you can't really process it with other people you don't really bring it up you know invite people around for a good time and then start saying so yeah we're all gonna die yeah right what are your thoughts yeah. <laughs> nice icebreaker um, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's kind of natural yeah. to us like that's a real conversation that's kind of an I don't yeah I don't mind that kind of a conversation actually I no. think that's a really I have, interesting I have noticed that yeah I'm sorry I, I just mean like I, I, I've noticed that with with um, other INFJs like there is no topic that's off limits it just naturally veers towards like deep dark mm -hmm. stuff and like trying to get to the unraveling the truth of humanity and it kind of just always goes to that that place so um yeah kind of nice doing the mbt ops well all of this stuff really just just to know just to meet fellow infjs and things and have that kind of conversation and it being so normal and yeah and it's not surprising either if you think about the ni ti like the nt sleep it's like the deep thinking about deep concepts it's it actually makes perfect sense if you think about it it's like you want to have the greater understanding like the yeah. deeper understanding and and I think yeah. at least for me like understanding is almost my you know purpose of my life like I really yeah. really really want to understand things yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's just an obs it's, for me I think that's kind of I just think it's not where you come from really. yeah yeah sorry you froze but I think we could follow you that's anyway. right yeah what, what no, I can't saying? remember what I said where we come from it's just, yeah and it's like your life's obsession kind of um for me anyway like just that's what, I, what I'm always thinking about so I'm always processing and processing and bringing in different things and like different questions and that's why I want to know that's you know I guess it's that that the truth thing coming coming back again with the TI and yes the um, truth. wanting to narrow everything down and like getting the right mm. I mean yeah <laughs> yeah there is nothing as satisfying when you actually understand something deep that is oh, so yeah. satisfying like the ultimate or even when you just feel like you're getting nearer when you just chisel a bit off and it's yeah kind of like, oh okay so I'm you, can, <laughs> you can sniff it in your pencil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah wow um again we could talk for hours and hours but yeah <clears throat> one last thought that i had was also that sometimes um having an eye and having this kind of end thinking like beginning with the end I have I don't know if you can relate but sometimes I have experienced that it can kill the excitement to a certain degree because what is the point if you already see the end you know which is the thing you yeah. should be striving for yeah. it's not really that exciting anymore can you relate to that yeah yeah absolutely and it, it does I think it affects the here and now as well doesn't it because you kind of even just as I suppose as a sensory example like when I do my painting mm -hmm. I just kind of I've tried it I, like I've always had this thing where I kind of I know what I'm gonna paint or draw this is before like 
because I've always done art even when I was doing my music thing I didn't kind of stop music and then start art like the art came before as well mm -hmm. um, but music yeah. was more of my what I was doing but so I I would know what I was roughly what I was going to draw and I kind of knew the thing and it was kind of I imagined it in my head or it was about this thing and then the 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 doing it wasn't as exciting where whereas like my music was more exciting because it because I didn't know the um I wasn't as uh technical with the music I, I guess you could say I didn't have like the musicianship skills mm. it was just all in my head and I was just trying to get it down and that was more exciting because I didn't quite know and when I was working with the band as well it was kind of like you didn't quite know how it was going to finish but now like I, I, I've changed the way I work mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know what it's going to look like which is why I got into abstract stuff because when I was doing more realistic things kind of like I already knew what this thing that you're going to paint looks like so I don't know if you're going to draw a face you know what a face looks like mm -hmm. so that's why I started to do abstract so I wanted to kind of push that a bit and get myself out of that uh, and it, it is a lot more exciting mm -hmm. but it, it's kind of more scary as well but um the last couple of paintings that I've done though um I've gone back to um knowing what they're going to look like beforehand and doing them digitally first and then projecting them up on a bigger piece to see what the difference would be and I'm finding the process a lot more laborious and not as exciting although possibly the final product more feels it feels more safe and more, more cohesive feels like that's a better way to work for me as a person because that's what I naturally want to do I, I want to prepare first know where I'm going before I get mm. there yeah but it's that excitement that's the difference yeah right because then it's more the the perfection game that is the yeah um, yeah yeah and I fall into a bad perfectionist yeah I've got perfectionist tendencies that kind of scuffle a lot of my artwork especially mm. when I'm doing abstract like some of what's beautiful about an abstract painting is all these weird things that have gone wrong and the drips and, the, and I end up I do this painting it's like oh wow I'm really liking these bits and I tidy it all up and smooth it all out and it's like oh what have I done to it <laughs> right yeah yeah I, I guess as OI doms the explorative side is what we need to work on maybe more and yeah. tapping into that kind of experiencing it as we go and not really knowing where we are going oh we don't for us maybe that is the thing to, oh, yeah. to explore that more yeah yeah because yeah. yeah, i mean most of my most of my friends are oe mm -hmm. even like so enfps INFPs, and most of my friends fall into those kind of types which is weird <laughs> right yeah but yeah. like, yeah, because I think we're, we're very similar because it's I, I, like, even though I'm technically an NT type, I, I can really get on with NS types as long as it's not too wee wee. No, and, and actually um, you are NT and F, so you are both in a savior state. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're frozen a bit as well. Yeah, it's, it's no you just worries. Froze a bit there. No worries. So, uh, yeah, oh, to, to, um, sorry. Uh, no, I, I was saying that you had frozen, but I think maybe I had frozen for you too. I'm not sure because it just yeah. came up on my screen. Yeah, we were both Thank frozen. You. And now we are oh. here. <laughs> we're all warmed up. <laughs> so, yeah, I was thinking of to conclude the whole thing. So I have a question, a final question for you. And then also, if you do have... A website or or Instagram or something where you present your art. Maybe I could put it down below in um, in the description. Okay, cool. Maybe someone got curious and it's interesting to see how your type is creating art. Maybe and uh, yeah, I'd love to see them at least. So I'll put it there. But oh, before nice. yeah, before we go, I'd like to ask you like from what you have learned so far. So you were typed a month ago, right? It's like even on the day, I think mm -hmm. today, the second of oh, yeah. Yeah, March yeah, yeah. or third or whatever mm -hmm. you said. <laughs> no, I, I think 
came through on the second and I didn't read it till the third. <laughs> right, yeah. I know because they have the type reveal for the people in the community tonight. You should be in the Discord because they will be on stage okay. receiving their types. It's a pretty exciting moment. Oh. Yeah, receiving love so, from oh. the community as they receive their types. I mean, some need to process it for a bit, but some are actually yeah. kind of just opening it as they are on stage. Probably the place which is yeah okay yeah no i'm just thinking which room is that in or what so i'm still, still quite new to discord yeah I'll, I'll instruct you after yeah. the video okay. um but yeah it's really simple it's easy and you will be able to find it i promise okay. and it's super interesting okay anyways um so you have had your type for a month and before that you were processing this kind of stuff as well and uh, in terms of you know knowing yourself and being you've been sleep processing a lot in your life if you would give some sort of um, thought or you know advice to someone of your type like your twin type or a very similar type what kind of um, advice would you give <clears throat> um yeah, I mean, the only thing I can think of is how how I have narrowed everything down so much to the point where there's a there's a system, like I said, for everything. Mm. Um, and I, yeah, it, I, I to the point where I can't even move without knowing how I'm going to do something, and it's I've just really got everything's just become very small and very claustrophobic, mm. even like with things like and all of all of those things just seem to have gone really squeezed in and I think now I'm desperate to kind of expand out and get more of the SE coming in because you know I'm 14 now so maybe that's the SE is coming in a bit more but I'm just thinking I'm wondering whether if, if I was younger like if, if somebody helped me learn to expand before it got to the point where I felt so small that I had to expand mm. do you know what I mean I don't know if that's something that you have to go through in order to expand or whether there's a way of kind of like just opening yourself up a bit because I, I guess we have a tendency to just kind of yeah. get lost in our heads be in that spiral of thoughts and um, anything that you can um, expose yourself to that might um, go against what you think and just um, yeah yeah rock your ship a bit not to be frightened of um of rocking the boat because i think that's mm -hmm. uh, i've had a lot of phobias and fears and stuff because of all have, like narrowing everything down and yeah maybe i wouldn't have had those if i'd have experienced more things and you know done done the things that i'm frightened of instead of running away from them. yes we are kind of only if we stay in that narrow little space that we have created uh, for ourselves, maybe to protect ourselves from the different fears. The joke is that the fears will actually just increase. We will kind of um, reinforce them. So what we all, I mean, as humans in general, whatever fears we have, we need to expose ourselves, like exposure therapy is the word actually. So you need yeah. to put yourself out there and then you will grow and you will discover things. And I think what you are saying, it's, it's a wonderful piece of advice. I love it because there are so many good things out there that we should experience as we are alive, right? There, it's so, mm -hmm. so, such a beautiful place, this planet and, and life has so much to offer to us. So we should discover what is out there and be a part of it when we are here, right? So I love yeah. your advice. Instead of just sliding before we do this. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so basically your advice is go consume or something along those yeah. lines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, go consume, get and your then, essay on. <laughs> yeah yeah it's um essay stuff you don't want to do yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a do wonderful hard thing we need to do that yes sometimes i think for a consume last it's almost like a sin to ask for something for self 
I don't know if it's the case if you are a DI as well, but if you are a consume last and a DE, it's it's um, something we are not really asking for ourselves. More maybe waiting for someone to to read our mind and and give us something that we don't even know ourselves that we wanted. You know, <laughs> it's very unrealistic. Yeah. But yeah, we are yeah. not going after it yeah. in that sense. I think I I go after doing things that I want to do myself but in terms of like actually consuming I I don't consume for my like I wouldn't sit and think oh, I really want to watch that film I'm just going to watch it tonight because I just I'd be thinking what do I need to do to fulfill this these things that I've got to do yeah it's a good thing, though, to be able to focus, but maybe we need to do a little bit of both and not shutting out yeah. ourselves out from life too much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's do, that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. Yeah. So it's yeah. been a great chat with you and I really, really yeah, enjoyed you... it. Thanks so and... much for having me on. Yeah, thank you for reaching out um, by commenting on my channel. It's awesome. And maybe someone else will be yeah, love, inspired by you to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's been, it's been really good to have this chat. And really cool. So. cool. Yeah, and your channel's awesome. It's really good. I, I love watching it. I've, I've watched things, obviously, sometimes twice, three times. So, <laughs> so That's yeah, great. I'll probably just be getting around. Or some painting. Yeah. <laughs> wonderful okay i'll talk to you later and um, let's end it here and see you around in the community okay love you all right take care bye